Hi everybody, my name's Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. And we have an hour together for yoga. So today there's a, we're gonna be focusing on being gentle with ourselves. So there is a principle in the yogic tradition which is called ahimsa. And directly translated, usually that's translated into non-harming. And um, it's a really important principle, um, but I like to think about it less as non-harming and more as being kind. So being kind to yourself, to your body, is a way of moving forward into your practice and assessing whether you're pushing yourself past boundaries that don't need to be pushed past. So, and that's a lot of checking in with yourself, noticing if this feels good to you. It's kind of like listening to me uh, about five or 10% of the time, listening to yourself the other 90% of the time and giving yourself permission to change things up, to adapt things or to not do things at all if it feels like it's not right for you. So moving forward into the practice, just, I'm just going to be throwing out that question if you're being gentle with yourself and um, you can, as always, just ignore me um, or you can use that as a way of kind of building awareness to where it is that you move from in your practice and maybe offer yourself a few moments of reflection throughout the practice to decide whether you could choose differently and that would feel better for you. Anyhow. Um, I would say I would stop talking, but I'm not going to. Um, so let's settle into a comfortable place where we finish, when we start our practice. So I'm sitting up on a block. You can start seated in a chair. This is, um, as always, do what's comfortable for you. There's no right and wrong here. So settling in to wherever it is that you're seated. And it doesn't have to look a particular way. We're all put together differently and every day is different. So make sure that you're really listening to yourself. And again, with that principle of non-harming, non is there something that you could offer yourself here that would give yourself even 1% more comfortable, more comfort? Or um, that it would feel better for you, even if that's, you know, putting on an extra layer or taking off an extra layer or getting a sip of water. The small things are the important things. So taking a big breath in when you're ready, exhaling it out huh, huh, as we settle into that support. And as you do that, you're welcome to soften your gaze or close your eyes. And you're already just by being present here, following along with a yoga class, you're already offering yourself kindness. You're already offering yourself time with yourself to move your body. So that's already, you get already 10 gold stars from me just by being present. But the important thing is not for me, but for yourself. We check in with ourselves and notice how we feel today and what yoga would look like to serve ourselves best today. And if that is moving gently, or if that is having a little bit of fire in our practice or a little bit of both, then just pay attention, just notice what it is what your intuition tells you would be helpful for you today. Noticing how you're feeling, what's on your mind, what's in your heart today. Noticing how your physical body feels, staying away from the judgments. Again, ahimsa, being kind and compassionate with yourself, just as if you were your own best friend. In actual fact, we our relationship to ourselves is the longest relationship and the deepest relationship we will ever have with anybody in this lifetime. So if we're gonna spend all that time with ourselves, we may as well get to 
enjoy ourselves, get to like who we are, and talk to ourselves with kindness and with compassion. Notice how your physical body is feeling. The places that you need to be careful of today, the places that feel tender or you feel discomfort in. Notice the places that are completely neutral. And those are usually the places that we have very little awareness to. And notice also the places that feel great that feel really top-notch today. And that may just be the tip of your big pinky finger. Again, no judgments, just a curiosity. Release any tension and tightness by maybe moving or taking a few breaths into any tension that you do feel. Ready, just starting to notice your breath, inhaling and exhaling in its own way. Allowing your breath to settle and smooth out as best as it can. The inhale is always that filling up of energy. It's always the aliveness of the breath. And the exhale is always this opportunity to soften something. And you have that within every breath, which is a way of, the inhale is a way of tuning in, the exhale, a way of really letting go of what you don't need. And allowing yourself that rest, that compassion. I'm gonna root down into wherever it is that you're seated and lift from there. Through the crown of your head, Broaden through the collarbone, soften the shoulders. This is the inhale and the exhale in your own time. We're going to take our gaze over towards the right side. Draw back with that left shoulder and notice sensations through the left side of the neck. On the inhale, lifting up towards the sky, exhaling over to the left. And that's the movement, inhaling up and over to the opposite side. Keeping those shoulders steady so as we look to one side, the opposite shoulder is not drawing forward. And again, noticing if you're pushing yourself to the furthest limit. And if you can be compassionate with yourself and maybe do a little less pushing today and notice how that feels. Ahimsa. Next time we come to one side on an exhale, whichever side you're on will rest there. Releasing any tension you may have built up in your body. This is now the inhale. On the exhale, chin down towards the chest and up through the other side, and that's the movement. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Moving with your breath. And noticing what your go-to is here. Is it to go to the furthest reaches of your range of motion or can you back off from that and be gentle with yourself today and of course you have an option to do whatever it is that feels right to you two more either side 
rest if you need to, if that's what your body is asking of you. And then when you're ready, chin coming down towards the chest, collarbones wide, and we're staying here for a few breaths. And then when you're ready on an inhale, drawing the crown of the head up, taking a breath in, exhaling it out. And from here, we're gonna take that right hand back behind us, widen through the collarbones, keeping your chest facing forward. This is an exhale on the next inhale, we're gonna lift up and tap towards the front left side, inhaling up, exhaling back. Keeping your heart facing forward to start with, keeping the joints, the shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers and thumbs soft, as if moving through molasses. Option to stay here or option to start to take the gaze and the heart with you. And maybe twisting a little more forward and back again. Staying in a place that feels comfortable in your body. You can start to reach through those joints if that feels okay for you or not. Again, you're the best judge of where it is you need to be moving into and from. And the next time that hand comes back in your own time, we're going to replace it back to center. Take a breath in and exhale it out. Mm -hmm. Left hand comes back. This is the exhale on the inhale. We're lifting up and tapping towards the right side. Inhaling up, exhaling back. Joints are easy here. It doesn't matter how high or how low that hand comes. Mm -hmm. Option to start to take a gentle twist with that movement. Simply the heart or you can start with the gaze also coming with that left hand. your own time always noticing if you're pushing yourself and if you are your own best friend what would you advise next time that hand comes back you're gonna keep it there and come back to center any softness you need go ahead and then from here you're welcome to stay seated if you want to take a seated cat and cow or I'm going to come over onto our hands and knees, patting those knees or underneath you as much as you need to. And if you want to come down to forearms, please go ahead and do that. Spreading your foundation nice and wide. On the inhale, draw the belly in, push into the hands and draw the back of the heart up towards the sky. Head is as neutral as it feels comfortable for you. On the next exhale, push into those hands and knees, draw the belly in towards the spine and round. And the inhale, the belly comes down, lifting the gaze, lifting the tailbone. Now this is gonna look different for each and every one of us, moving through the breath. So there's very little stillness here in the movement, we're not hanging out at the top or the bottom of the breath, unless that's what you fancy doing. Otherwise, we're using the entire breath to get that whole range of motion, the extension and flexion through the spine. And again, are you being gentle with yourself here? Are you being harsh with yourself? Are you asking more of your body than it wants to give in this moment? 
Inhaling and exhaling. We've got another two here. Steady breath. Awareness open to everything that arises. And coming back to center. From here, rolling through those ribs. Big barrel rolls through the ribs as it feels comfortable for you. This doesn't have to be a big movement. If there's another movement that arises for you that feels better, go ahead. That is part of being kind to yourself, is allowing yourself to play. And we'll go around in the opposite direction when you're ready. Another few in this direction. Any other movement, of course, that arises, please explore it. And then when you're ready, coming back to center, belly draws in, back of the heart lifts, and notice, notice how this feels here. And from there, Drawing the knees closer in towards each other, extending that left leg out behind you, toes to the floor, and we're rocking forward and back, waking up the back of that left leg. Patting the right knee if that feels more comfortable for you, or doubling over your mat so that knee has extra softness underneath. Again, that is part of being kind to yourself. Coming to center, and then on an inhale, option to lift up through the heel, exhaling, tapping down. The heel not coming any higher than your hip itself. And so we keep the back as neutral as possible. Always making accommodations as you need them. Next time that heel comes up, option to keep them there. Circling through the ankle in one direction. And then circling in the opposite direction, slow and steady. And at the end of the next exhale, drawing that left knee in and sending the left foot out to the side. So it's kind of more or less level with the hip. That right hand is supporting your right shoulder, left fingertips come up onto finger, uh, the fingers come up onto fingertips like a tent. Great place to be. And we're opening up towards the left side. So the hips are already opening and lifting up from that, those left fingers. We're already getting a gentle twist in the spine. From here on the inhale, option to send that elbow up as we open through the collarbones. Exhale, tapping down. Getting used to that movement here. Option to stay here. Option to open up through that left arm. You can take the gaze with you. We've already been there today. Mm -hmm. Getting that length across the collarbones. Option to stay there. Three breaths, leaning as far back as you like, considering drawing the shoulder blades towards each other, opening up through the whole of the front body, getting that twist all the way through to the base of the skull. And at the end of that last exhale, allowing that left hand to come down, left knee draws in. And from here, just circling hips back towards the heels, shoulders forward, and then we'll take that in the opposite direction. If you prefer to come to child's pose, go ahead. And then from here, knees come in towards each other, 
re-establish your foundation, right foot out behind you, toes to the floor, and rocking forward and back, always coming to forearms if that feels more comfortable for you. And getting that length through the right leg, but also opening up through that ankle joints, in fact, through all of the joints of the feet as we come forward and back. Option to stay there, option to come to stillness. Establishing your foundation, patting that left knee if you need to. Again, a himsa, being gentle with yourself. Keeping this option on the inhale, we lift up through the heel. Exhale, slowly taking it down, tapping down. Either taking your weight on the foot as it comes down, or just a gentle tap. Inhaling and exhaling. Option to stay tapping up and down, or the next time that heel comes up, we stay and circling through that ankle. One direction, slow and steady. And back in the opposite direction when you're ready. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, we're coming all the way to the right side, and because I have a wall there, I'm going to send my right foot out to the right. Left hand is supporting you, any angle that you feel comfortable, and of course, you can always come down onto forearms. Right fingertips, option to come up onto the fingertips, so we're tenting there. This is a great place to stay. You can see my body's already tilted towards the right side. Option on an inhale to draw the elbow up towards the sky as we open up through the collarbones. So that's the inhale, exhale coming down. Great place to stay. We've already been in this rotation before. Option to take the arm up, maybe even back behind you. And the gaze can come with you, taking that twist all the way through to the base of the skull. And the option is here to pulse or reach and stay. One is not better than the other. Steady breath. Staying for the last exhale. And then coming all the way back to center. Knee coming in. Again, any movement that feels good in the spine. And then when you're ready, Knees go a little wider maybe, big toes in towards each other, and we're coming back with our hips back towards our heels. You can of course sit up on a prop if that feels comfortable for you. Support a child's pose with your hands, your forearms, stacked fists, a block, or all the way down. Staying in stillness, you can rock a little bit from side to side. Any movement at all that feels good to you or stillness, your choice. You can play around with what feels right to you. And then when you're ready, coming back to that steady breath and asking yourself, is this the kindest I can be to myself? in this shape? Is there something else I can offer myself that could feel a little easier, a little better? Do I need to stay here for a while? Or am I already feeling time to move on? Wherever you are, you can stay for as long as you like. And then when you're ready, coming all the way back up to hands and knees in your own time, and this is a recording, you can stay wherever you are for as long as you like. We're gonna tuck those tail, uh, tuck those toes, sorry, walk our hands back. And from there, coming all the way up to standing in your own time, in your own way, 
and I will meet you there. Coming up to standing, taking your feet at a comfortable distance for you. Rooting down into your feet, very much like we did when we were seated. You can even grip the floor with your toes a little bit, waking up that awareness underneath you as we lift up through the crown of the head from there. Palms towards me, draw the shoulder blades back towards each other somewhat and those collarbones open. Take a breath in. Exhale it out. And then come back to that softness, that steadiness of breath. And again, check in, notice how you're feeling here. Mm -hmm. So we root down, we rise from there, turning the palms out from the elbows. We inhale up, exhale down, keeping it steady, keeping it smooth as if we're moving with the breath, like a dance. Option to stay here or start to move from the shoulders as we're warming those shoulders up. Keeping the joints easy or reaching through the joints, your choice. And then option, lifting up and exhale, very much like we did when we were seated, twisting to one side. Inhaling up to center and twisting to the opposite side and letting your hips come with you. Keeping that gentle spinal twist. Mm -hmm. One more either side. center. Rolling the shoulders, anything you need for support here. And coming towards the front of your mat. Feet a comfortable distance for you. Hands coming onto the hips. And then just figuring out what feels good for you here. On an inhale, we're going to lift up through the left heel, bending the left knee, finding that connection with those right toes. You can even pick up the toes, spread them wide, and take them down to the mat. On one of your next exhales, you're going to step back with that left foot. So from here, we're going to turn the toes pretty much out towards the side, towards the left side of your mat. Right toes are facing forward, and then we're going to turn in with the left toes. So the heel is pointing a little bit out. Now from here, notice where your feet are on the mat. Wiggle yourself from side to side. See if you can um, feel comfortable here. Now there's an option. We're coming into triangle. Option to draw the left heel back more in line with the right foot. Now this suits some people, it doesn't suit others. Again, this comes back to the principle of ahimsa. What feels most comfortable for you as opposed to what you think is right and wrong, because there is no right and wrong here. This is learning to decide for your own body what feels best for you. Wherever you are, we've got those um, left heels pushing more back behind you, toes are out. Um, rather than um, at an uh, exact angle out towards the left side, that um, left heel is out. And then from here, rooting to rise from there, always adjusting your stance. From here, we're going to draw that left shoulder back. So here we are, so we've got this opposing forces. The left shoulder, the shoulders or collarbones are parallel to the left side of the mat. The right toes are facing forward and the left toes are kind of somewhere that feels comfortable for your hip. Now the legs are rooted and straight here, rooting down to rise up, very much like when we were uh, just simply standing up. 
hands to the hips. This is the inhale. On the exhale, we draw that right hip back and stick the left hip out. Inhale, back to center, and there we are, just wiggling through the hips a little. Now, already here, if you're feeling inhibited by your stance, change it up. So we're trying to get the fluidity here. Just notice what that feels like. Mm -hmm. And then from here, we're going to send that right hip back, left hip comes back, and here we stay. Hands on the hips, you're going to slide that right hand down to the right thigh. Now, if it feels better to have a little bend in that front knee, then please do. But we're rolling back with the left shoulders. That's where all that rotation was coming in earlier. Great place to be right here. Opening up towards the left side. Excellent place to stay. Using that hand as support, somewhere on the top of the right thigh or the right shin, but just not pushing into that knee joint. Left shoulder comes out, left hand on the hip. Wherever you are, great place to stay. Rooting down to rise. And again, if it feels better to have a little bend in that front knee, go ahead. Ahimsa, doing what is best for you. Wherever you are, option to stay here wide through the collarbones or send those right or those left fingertips up towards the sky. Gaze can come with them. We've already been here today. And here we are in triangle. Now, that can look a whole lot of different ways for all of us. So deciding for yourself. Rooting down through your feet, both feet equally. And we're lifting up from there. The last option here is to come into extended triangle, which is to roll that left hand down and over the left ear and reaching. And here we're getting a connection down from the back outside edge of the foot all the way up through the side of the body and over through the crown of the head. And if that arm is extended through the fingertips, joints are easy or reaching your choice. And here we are, three breaths. Now, if you're dumping a lot of your weight into that right hand, option to hover. Steady breath. And then on the next inhale, that left hand brings us all the way up. Mm -hmm. Facing towards the front of the mat and stepping forward. Bending through the knees, hula hooping through the hips, and noticing how it feels back in the opposite direction. Coming back to mountain pose, rooting to rise, steady breath. Okay, same thing, other side. I'm going to come this way so I can face the camera. Hands to the hips, steady the gaze, steady the breath. Root down through the front foot, that left foot, to lift up through the right heel. And then from here, we're stepping that right foot back. Left toes facing forward, and same with the right toes, they're facing out towards the side, then you're gonna curl them in a bit. That means we get this internal rotation, so our legs aren't quite as um, at war as they would be if it was out in one direction. Bend through the knees, hula hoop through the hips a little. If this doesn't feel good to you, change up your foundation. And option, of course, is to draw that left or the right heel back in line more with the left heel or not. Again, a hip set, you get to choose. Then we root down through both feet and lift from there drawing that right shoulder open. So we're open to the right side of your mat here. And again, you're gonna get to know your body really well and know that maybe if I just adjust a little bit, that's gonna feel better for me and I'm not gonna be harming myself. It's gonna be more an offering of compassion and kindness. Hands to the hips and we've got all these opposing things going on in the body. Feet at different angles, shoulders coming over to the right, and you get to change things up and decide. A little bend in that front knee may feel better. 
This is the inhale. On the exhale, left hip comes back, right hip slides out. Just getting used to that. And again, all of these, um, all of these st uh, steps along the way is an opportunity for you to decide if you want to change things up. Option two, shift the hips back and stay there. Hand is supporting you. Again, if a little bend in that front knee helps you, go ahead. But the right shoulder is rolling back, so the collarbones are wide here. And this may be enough for you. Option to stay here with those wide collarbones, with that rotation in the spine, which we've been working on the whole class. An option to send those fingertips a little further down, just not on that knee joint. We don't want to be pushing into any joints, opening up through the upper body. Whole lot going on here. So again, be gentle with yourself. Adjust things as you need to. Option to stay here. Option to open up through those right fingertips towards the sky. And now we get to widen the collarbones, draw the shoulder blades back towards each other, head back in line. Option to take a gaze up towards that right thumb. Steady breath here. And again, coming to a place that feels comfortable for you. No right and wrong here, your choice. Last option is to roll down that right hand up and over the right ear so we're reaching. Connection from the outer blade of that right foot all the way up through to the crown of the head and maybe through those fingertips if they're extending. Steady breath. And if you're taking a whole lot of your weight in that bottom hand, option to lighten it. Reaching in all directions, using the support as you need to. You've got another full breath here. And when you're ready on an inhale, that right hand draws you all the way up. Hands to the hips, facing forward and stepping forward, bending through your knees, hula hooping through the hips in one direction and hula hooping through the hips in the opposite direction. Rooting down to rise, coming back to mountain pose. Steady your breath. You can always take one hand to breath, uh, your chest, one hand to belly, and breathe into the palms of your hands. So you notice how the body responds to the breath. Mm -hmm. Settling everything down. And then when you're ready, releasing. And after that one standing pose, we're going to come down to the earth and I'll meet you there. Here we are all the way back down and we're going to come down all the way onto our back for a very gentle ending. So knees to the sky, feet to the floor, readjusting yourself here so it feels comfortable. Again, that's part of Ahimsa is making sure you're taking care of yourself to the best of your ability in the moment. Any pillow underneath your head or softness, you go ahead and take what it is that you need. Knees come in towards each other, feet spread away. This is a const um, constructive rest pose. Hands coming onto the belly, softening the gaze or closing the eyes. And just take a few breaths here. Allowing yourself this gentle, soft rest. Allow your body to rest into the support underneath you. And once you've oriented yourself to where it is that you are, we're going to take the knees just a little bit apart and we're going to draw that right knee in towards your chest. Give it a little hug here and then we'll circle through that ankle in one direction. Steady breath and back in the opposite direction. Always giving yourself the opportunity to change up the movement if it feels better for you. 
coming back to center, really connecting into the floor underneath you. And then from here, taking that right ankle over the top of the left leg, winging that right knee out, coming into a figure four. And from here, option to stay here, especially if you're getting sensation in that right knee already, or the right hip, sorry. And then option to draw that left thigh in. Hands on the thigh, underneath the knee, in front of that shin, giving those feet a little bit of a flex, your choice. And staying where it is that feels comfortable for you. And comfortable doesn't mean that the sensation is the strongest it can, probably, uh, it can possibly be. Staying in a place that your breath is steady and it feels manageable. And it feels good. And if this is not for you, then no big deal. Then another movement. You can, of course, add on by drawing that left thigh deeper in towards your chest and pulling away to ease things up. Or even replacing that left foot on the floor if that's what feels better for you. Option to stay here. Option to send that left leg up towards the sky. A little flex in that foot, sending the heel up and the toes back towards you is going to increase sensation in the back of that left leg. Option to reach over the right shin onto that left leg. You can send your fingertips up through the back of that leg, even take hold of the foot, wherever it's comfortable for you. But pushing through that heel, we're getting into the right hip here, but also into the back of that left leg. You've got another few breaths. If you're lifting your tailbone up off the floor, connect it back down the back of your pelvis, and that's gonna change up the sensation so you get to choose what it is that feels comfortable here. And then wherever you are, the end of your next exhale, we'll reconnect that left foot down towards the floor. Connecting that right foot down too. And then when you're ready, drawing the left leg in. Same thing, other side. So a little flex in that foot. And then we're circling through that ankle as we draw that left knee in towards those left ribs. And then back in the opposite direction. Slow and steady. Always deciding what feels best for you here at Himsa. Being gentle, being compassionate with your body being okay with where it is in this moment. And then from wherever you are, we're gonna cross over that left ankle on top of the right thigh. This may be where you stay. Or you can draw that right thigh in, thread the needle, your hands can come either side of the thigh, behind that shin, or in uh, front of the shin, your choice. And again, coming from a place of compassion for yourself, for your body understanding that, that you're working with your body and not against it. Add to sensation by drawing the right thigh closer or backing away from sensation by releasing it somewhat. And then the option is here to extend that right leg up towards the sky, pushing through the heel, drawing the toes back towards you, and you don't need to um, change anything from here. That might already be a lot. You don't have to, of course, extend that leg too straight. Option to send the fingertips over the left thigh so we start to draw that right shin down towards us any amount. You can use a strap, of course, anything that you have handy or coming to the back of that right leg wherever it feels like you have a connection. Don't forget that connection to the left knee drawing out so we get into not only the hip but also the option of the back of that right thigh. Stay at a place where the breath is steady. Option to draw the back of the pelvis down towards the floor a little to add sensation. You get to choose what feels best here. 
And then when you're ready, releasing that right foot down to the floor and the left foot comes down too. From here, we're gonna pick up the hips and shift them over to the left side. Arms come in a cactus or a T, or whatever feels comfy for you. In the shoulders, so the shoulders are rooted here. You can take any props at the right side of you if you want to, otherwise those knees are coming together, ankles, and coming over to the right, keeping that left shoulder rooted. And of course, if you have any props handy, you can keep that under that, um, the knees as they come over to keep that left shoulder grounded. Option is to take the gaze over that left shoulder if the left shoulder is connected to the earth. So we get that spiral that we've been working on all class, all the way up to the base of the skull. Take a breath in. Exhale it out, steady and smooth. And we start to release tension in the body. Again, always coming from a place of ahimsa, a place of being gentle with ourselves. When you're ready, gaze can come up to center, knees can come up to center, and then our hips back into a central place, making any adjustments you need to. Option to stay here, option to shift the hips towards the right. Shoulders are rooted, especially that right shoulder. Shift your, if any, you need any props, over to the left side. Knees draw together in and over. Right shoulder is rooted. And if that is the case, you can take your gaze over that right shoulder. Inhaling and exhaling. Everything feeling easy here. Releasing tension as it arises. Gaze comes to center when you're ready and that doesn't have to be now. Knees come up to center and from there we're resetting ourselves back to a place where we feel comfortable. You can stay here for rest. You can take the knees together like we just did in constructive rest. This is great for the lower back. Or option to send those legs out long, coming into your place of rest, onto your side, onto your belly. You can just simply get up and lie on your couch or your recliner or your bed, whatever feels good for you. And as you are getting sorted in your own way, I'm gonna come up to seated. Taking your time to settle into a place that feels super comfy for you. And again, ahimsa, this is about being compassionate, being kind to yourself. There's no right, no wrong here, nothing you're supposed to be doing other than listening to what it is that your body needs and offering your body that support. When you're ready, when you're settled, take a breath in and on that exhale, go ahead and soften your gaze or close your eyes if you haven't already. Feeling that support underneath you. And allowing yourself this time to let go. Giving yourself the opportunity to Really release your body into that support underneath you. Ahimsa, non-harming of self. Of being as compassionate and as gentle and as kind to ourselves and our bodies 
as we would to a friend who we loved and were devoted to? How different would you treat yourself and your body if you were offering advice to a trusted friend? How much more gentle would your judgments be of yourself and your body if you were speaking to a loved one? Allowing yourself this time to truly rest. Allowing your bones to rest all the way down to the very core of your bones. Allowing your joints to feel easy. your organs to let go of tension around them. Your muscles, tendons and ligaments to loosen. to soften back into their sockets as the muscles, those tiny muscles around, behind and in front of your eyes and your eyelids release. Your jaw to relax and your thoughts also to ease, to come and go, to flow, but not to get attached to them. Let your skin soften like wax in the sunshine. How often do you allow yourself? this time to really let go. And I don't mean sleep. I mean to truly connect with relaxation. befriending yourself and your body. Part of Ahimsa is knowing and learning that language or tuning into your own needs and wants and desires. And so if you need to stay here for longer, then please stay, just simply tune my voice out and know you can rest deeply here for as long as it is that you need to. If you would like to finish your practice and starting or even with closed eyes to sense into the environment around you, 
starting to tune into the sounds around you, the feel of the space. And then start to notice your body as it's resting. Notice different aspects of that support underneath you. starting to take gentle breaths in your own time. And with that gentleness of spirit, starting to lazily awaken your body in its own way. Gentle movements, maybe stretching long or wide or just simply listening to what it is that you need. There's no right, no wrong here. And from there, maybe coming to rest on one side, taking a moment. Ahimsa, being gentle with yourself, being kind, being compassionate. taking yourself in your own time to a place where you would like to finish your practice, whatever that means to you. There is no right, no wrong way of being. Rooting down to rise. Hands connecting in your own gesture, whatever that is. Taking a breath in, exhaling, lowering your gaze or softening your gaze or closing your eyes, chin towards chest. And think about one thing, one thing that you can bring into your day, your evening, your week ahead that would be an offering to yourself of ahimsa, of that gentle, kind compassion of befriending yourself and your body. What does ahimsa mean to you? Maybe set an intention for putting that thing in motion to be kind, be gentle and compassionate with yourself. From my heart to yours, Thank you for being here today and following through with the class. Namaste.